Yo, what is up fam? I'm kind of whispering right now because my girlfriend's next door and sleeping, but I was really excited and wanted to share this with you. I was thinking about it. I've been studying it. Um, I've been implementing it um, and it's really freaking cool and something that can help you retire 10 years earlier, 20 years earlier, even for some people 30, 35 years earlier than most people retire like completely. Like you don't have to worry about money ever again and have that nagging voice in the back of your head like where like um i need more money i need more money i need more money like you're good you're set it just shuts that voice up as much as possible um and i wanted to share this with you it's really cool it's a simple calculation and i have kind of distilled it so i'm going to give you quick wins on the slide right now i know we're late like it's late, it's like 11 p.m. on the West Coast. But I wanted to share this with you guys because it's super cool. And I was just like in a hype state to share it with you. Um, so if you're on the live right now, if you're one of the soldiers in the fucking group, say what's up, say hi, give it a heart, give it a like. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube right now, I hope you get an immense amount of value and you calculate your FI number. So you have that goal, that number that you can shoot for. And it makes retirement it makes like just being able to live off of passive investments way more tangible um and what's up in australia thanks for being with me so maybe we'll get some australians on here i'm super excited to share this stuff with all of you so if you guys haven't heard about the fire movement um it's really been uh growing over the past five years or so um and it's it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think if you learn about it now, you're gonna be one of like the initial people that really take hold of it and start implementing it. Um, and just start taking control of your own finances and your own life and really make it tangible um, and, uh, and, and inspiring. Like when I nailed down my FI number, uh, my financial independence number, I lit, it lit a fire under my ass and I'm like, that's freaking cool. Um, like I know what I need to hit now. Um, I have a North star um, and it just clears so much up for you. Um, and we're gonna dive into it. Um, I'm gonna turn on my phone right now and check out all the comments and say what's up to everybody that's on the live late at night. Did somebody, can I share this? That was on a different post. Um, let's dive into the group. Shout out to all the soldiers here. I am so freaking excited for this. Sue, what's up? Chris, home dog, thanks for being Sorry, here. Guys, if you have any questions along the way, um, shoot them out and I'll also do a little uh, Q&A at the end for anything you wanna ask. Um, so I'm super excited about this. So Sue, uh, Chris, uh, thanks for being here. And this is something that could totally change the course of your life. Uh, so if you're learning about it now, I'm super excited for it. If you haven't heard about it, um, super excited for you guys to learn about it. If you have, I'm excited to deepen your knowledge on it. Hopefully, you might know more than me. I've been studying this for a couple months now. Um, but I'm going to flip my camera around. <clears throat> so this is called the FIRE movement, the Financial Independence Retire Early movement. If you guys have heard of it, um, just drop a comment down below, hashtag FI, if you've heard about it before. If you haven't, just say, I haven't heard about it <laughs> down in the comments. I'd love to know. Um, and super excited to share all of this knowledge with you. So financial independence retire early. Um, I created this little SOP document, uh, which like I've been going ham with SOPs and delegating and everything. And I'm like, eh, I'm in the zone. This isn't the best written out SOP, standard operating procedure, um, but it'll do. I'll, I'll send this over to all you guys um, at the end of the live. If you hashtag uh, TOB for Tribe of Buyers, what's up? And I hope you guys come to Tribe Buyers Live uh, this year um, so I can meet you in person. Um, but uh, this is a quick SOP document of how to um, uh, how to nail down your financial independent number. Um, uh, Monica's saying she hasn't heard about it. Sue hasn't heard about it. So I'm excited to share this with you guys. Um, so this is how you determine your financial independent number. So why is that important? So what, you, what your FI number is 
Um, the amount of money you need in passive investments in your portfolio to live off the interest for the rest of your life. So when should you determine your FI number? You should do it right now. And I'm going to add this video to the video overview so it's there. So this is just not the best written out step-by-step -step process, but here it is, kind of two steps. Um, your first step in determining your FI number, and we're just going to jump into it. You need to figure out how much you spend on average per year. Now, I know this can be confronting. Um, like not too many people love looking at their bank statements or seeing how much they're spending and where their money's going. But you guys, what what's measured is managed. Um, and you will get so much more out of your money, out of your life, if you are managing everything and keeping, uh, just being totally transparent and honest with yourself, with everything, all the data, all the numbers. So really do this hard work and look at what are all your expenses? Where can you cut back? What should you not be spending money on? Um, and really nail down like a true number of like, how much you spend on your per average. Um, and some easy apps that you can go to to figure this out without having to go through every freaking bank statement. Um, there are three apps that I recommend, Personal Capital, Mint, and Clarity Money. You can download these to your phone. Um, I, pers I have Personal Capital and Clarity Money on my phone. I use Clarity Money more for like my personal stuff um, and then I have, uh, 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 in terms of like expenses, I look at clarity money more and then personal capital. I look at my personal wealth, um, and my portfolio and stocks and all of that, uh, inside of personal capital. So highly recommend those two are the main ones that I use personal capital and clarity money. But if you don't like clarity money, you can use mint as well. And this is to easily sort through last year's expenses or the year before that, year before that, so you can get a clear idea of like what you're spending your money on. So really think about the core things that you spend on money every single month. So your rent and mortgage, your car payments, your food, your gas, your if you still have college loans, uh, your internet, your electricity, water, so on and so forth, like every area. And then you can look at your expenses and see really where you can cut back. So you can have, you can put more money to, um, uh, to where it will actually work for you inside of um, passive investments. So um, you wanna nail down what your expenses are every single year and be real honest and vulnerable with yourself. I think we just had a lot of people drop off. I see three people on the live, which is kind of funny if so many people dropped off when we're talking about money and this is super fucking important. So shout out to the five of you that are here. Um, but uh, what you wanna do from there, get your expenses down, what you're spending um, uh, uh, on average and how much you need to live really, and then multiply that by 30. And there, there's some like, some people say 25, some people say 30, but that is your financial independence number. So you can just go into a quick um, Excel sheet right here and say, hey, my yearly expenses, um, if you're living in the Midwest, it might be around 20,000 or 30,000 if you're single, don't have like a family or anything like that. And then um, just multiply that by 30 and you come out with what you need in passive investments. And mind you, um, this number may look intimidating, but if you are um, investing into something that uh, your money makes money and you're getting um, that uh, compound interest, your money can grow quickly. And there isn't a lot of people have a spending problem. It's not an earning problem. It's they don't like you look at how much you have in your bank account at the end of the year and you're like, well, I made $80,000 this year, but I only have 5K in my bank account. Like, where's all the money going? And there have been plenty of people that I've talked to that's just like, well, I'm making a lot of money, but I don't know where it's going. And just because they're not managing their money, they're not 
looking at the hard data of like where their money is actually going. And I highly recommend downloading personal capital for that. Um, but uh, that's how you calculate your financial independence number. And then you can live off that. So um, one site that I highly recommend going to and studying all this, if this interests you and you're interested in retiring 10, 20 years earlier than what you first expected, go to this website. It's called themadfiantist.com. Um, it was highlighted in a documentary that I was watching. And my God, it is filled with so much gold information for you on actually how to, um, uh, how to hit your FI number and how to invest and how to save money on taxes and all of that. So if you hit start here, um, it's actually a really well laid out website and he goes into everything around um, financial independence um, and retiring early and he actually did it. Um, so I believe he was an actual scientist and he wanted to retire early and I believe he retired, yeah, he retired at age 34 and he wasn't an entrepreneur. He was working a full-time job as a software developer. Um, so, uh, so he just nailed down his FI number, started managing his money the right way and then started saving money and putting it away into um, passive investments. Um, so I'm sure you guys are going to be asking, like, what are you investing in, Andrew? What have you learned from this? All of that. Um, so I'll just share that with you guys. Uh, if you guys have questions on investing and all that, and mind you, uh, I'm not a financial advisor. Don't, uh, uh, don't sue me. Um, this is for um, entertainment purposes only. And I have to say that so you guys don't sue me. So um, we'll just we'll just hop right into it. Um, and personally, um, the best investments that I ever get and you're ever going to get is investing. Best investments. Number one is yourself. So investing into yourself, um, education, um, uh, mentors, programs, coaching programs, courses, um, and furthering your, your knowledge books, um, and your inputs, your inputs equal your outputs. So you need to be taking, you set a path. Oh, actually, this is huge too. I just have so much going on in my head. Um, your vision, drive your goals. Your goals, drive your planning. Your planning, drive, drives your resources. Your resources drive your execution. So if you're coming from this framework, the very first thing that you need to do in life is set a vision for yourself. What is that thing? What is that vision? And I was actually having a conversation with a friend earlier today. I was smoking some hookah with her. Um, and we got on the topic of Dharma. Um, and I don't know how much you guys know about uh, Dharma or following your path, but there's a really, really good book on it. Um, it's uh, It kind of creates a synopsis of the Bhagavad Gita. Um, and the book is called, um, uh, burr, 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 Your Life, The Great Work of Your Life by Stephen Cope. Um, if you guys don't have a vision, you don't have a path, you're feeling lost, like I highly, and just anybody in general, I highly, highly recommend 
Getting the Great Work of Your Life by Stephen Cope. Um, so when I was reading this book, it was in the middle of 2018 when I was going through like burnout and breakdown and I didn't know my path. Like I had been blocked for five years and like in depression and taking Wellbutrin for three of those years and antidepressant and um, just drinking heavily and just coping with everything. And I realized I was just blocking myself from who I truly was. And like, I was numbing myself from the pain. And I didn't know I had pain at that time. Like I thought I was fine, everything was okay. But when, it was when I started removing things from my life that were toxic and numbing me and that I was just coping with, such as drinking and toxic friends and jo the job that I hated, that I started to become more in tune with myself and my emotions and love in life and connecting with more people. And um, I did that and my business took off, my life started to take off. And then I went through this burnout breakdown period in 2018 where I just I was, I didn't know why I was doing what I was doing. So I was growing Facebook groups, selling courses, running an agency. And I'm like, this is cool. Like, I'm like, it's awesome where I came from, but I feel fucking empty inside still. And what this book allowed me to do was connect the dots to like my Dharma, my real path, like who I actually was. So in this book, he talks about um, Gandhi uh, and uh, sorry, I might screw up her name, Sam Goodall. Um, or I might screw up her first name. If you want to put her right first name in the, in the uh, comments, go ahead. But um, how they found or they knew their Dharma, their, your Dharma comes from um, your true self and you, who you were as like an innocent child. Like what were those things that lit you up and that you were super passionate about? So, um, God, I'm gonna screw up your name again. <laughs> um, I'm really bad with words. Uh, and yet I speak on stages and it's fucking crazy and I suck with words. <laughs> I forget words. Um, but uh, uh, Sam Goodall, um, please give me her first name. I'm actually, fuck, I'm gonna look her. Uh, Sam Goodall, is that her name? No, not her. Uh, Goodall, uh, gorillas. Jane, fuck, oh my God, Jane Goodall. So, um, Jane Goodall, this lady right here just totally changed science. Um, and, uh, how we, um, how we look at like primates, apes, all that stuff. And she followed her Dharma. She went out into the jungle for 30 years and studied primates. Um, and she followed her path, her true calling. And when she was little, she would go into chicken coops on her parents' farm and watch the hens lay eggs. And she had just like, that was her thing. That's what stuck with her her whole life, like just observing animals. And that was her path, that was her dharma, that was the thing that she loved and she turned it into her life mission. And if you just go back to the things that you enjoyed as a kid and see how that overlaps with like, what you could be doing in your life, you find so much more passion and purpose. And for me, that was going back to when <laughs> I was six years old. My mom, um, here, I'll flip this around. My, uh, oh, I screwed that up. Um, my mom signed me up uh, on a, softball team when I was six um, because she didn't know how to sign me up for a t-ball team. So I was playing with like a bunch of girls when I was six years old and uh, and they had to sell um, candy. 
um, to raise money for the team. And one morning I woke up and before my parents got up and I grabbed the box of candy with a big smile on my face and I busted through the door and I went out throughout the neighborhood, knocking on doors, smiling, like selling candy. And my parents were worried sick. And I came back like two, three hours later and um, I came back with an empty box, no more candy uh, and, uh, and just um, a handful of cash. Um, and I went back to that moment and I went back to when I used to sell um, I used to sell baseball cards on eBay and I would flip them. So I would buy like 1960s cards and I knew if I bought a, um, like a Mickey Mantle card, a Roger Maris card, and a Hank Aaron card, and then put them all together. And I put that in the title of the listing with all three names. I would get so many more search hits than if I had just sold one off cards. So what I would do is buy three cards in a lot or three cards individually, then I would put them in a lot. And then I would um, title it with those three like big baseball player names and I would sell it for a 50% profit. And I thought back to those moments and I'm like, damn, I was meant to be an entrepreneur. Like I was meant to sell. And like, that's ingrained. That's what I really, really enjoyed as a kid. Um, and I realized like when I turned 18 and went to college, I lost all of that. Like I lost that like passion and I was following like what I was told by society to do, which was get an education um and get my psych degree and have fun in college and drink a lot and talk to girls and all of that stuff um and i just totally lost that dharma side of myself of like i was on this earth to be an entrepreneur and do business and have fun with it um and really trust myself and um i tried to go this whole other path and I was blocked for so long. I tried to, uh, tried to like, I was subconsciously numbing myself with toxic relationships and alcohol and drugs and all of that stuff that was getting in the way of my dharma, my path, like what I actually was meant to do on this earth. So what I'm trying to say, is buy that book, uh, get it on Amazon. I think it's like 15 bucks. Um, the Great Work of Your Life by Stephen Cope. And um, really start thinking about like, what did I enjoy as a kid? Like, what the fuck lit me up? Um, and where is that inside of me right now? Like, where am I blocking that? What do I need to remove in my life um, that will allow me to fully express myself. For me, I was blocking with alcohol, drugs, toxic relationships. And then I found like, if I remove that stuff, it allowed me to have more space for better relationships and like attracting more high vibrational people, um, and getting more in tune with myself with, um, uh, with not numbing myself anymore, not like binge watching TV or overeating or um or any of that shit so yeah find that thing that is innately within you that you enjoyed as a kid and unblock yourself from achieving that and following that path um and kind of went on a tangent here um but i hope that was helpful um that's one of the biggest life lessons I've learned in the past uh, five years. Um, shit, two years. So what I'm trying to say is find that and create your vision. Like what do you, what's your path and what do you see in the future? What's that vision look like? What does your life look like 10 years down the road? Because once you know that, 
then you can set up 10 year goals. I, I recommend a 10 year target. Like don't have it like super duper, like this is going to be it. Like don't keep it rigid because so much shit can change over 10 years. But um, then in goals, 10 year target, three year picture. So have a target for 10 years, have a three year picture of like being really clear on what you want in three years and then have one year goals and then 90 day goals, goals. Um, and really don't set less goals, set more standards. So really keep this to like three to seven goals for your one year goals. And this should be three to five goals. This can be personally, this can be in your business, whatever it is, right? So now you have your vision, Dharma and what you want your life to look like in the future. And then when you have that, you set the goals to hit that, to create that life, right? And then you're planning start planning and start the planning for your next 90 days. And good thing this is, I'm making this video at the beginning of the year. Um, nail down, what are those three to five goals that are gonna help you get to your one-year goals that are gonna, your one-year goals are gonna help you get to your three-year picture. Your three-year picture, that's gonna help you get to your 10-year target. Um, and uh, then you can start, start planning. Like, what resources do you need um, to plan this out to and to actually um, accomplish your goals? And then action or massive fucking action. Not fucking action. I said that with a weird cadence. Massive fucking action. Um, take massive action towards your goals. And... Um, when, I'm going to say when, because it happens every fucking day, when you get distracted, remind yourself of your goals and ask yourself, will this help me achieve my 90 goals. If the answer is no, push off that thing to the next quarter, year, whatever. Oh my God, am I still showing myself? I am an asshole. Oh, that's funny. You guys are still watching. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Nope, flip that around. So this is what I was talking about right here. Yep, if you want this document, just TOB down below and I'll shoot it over. If you guys are enjoying this, if you're getting any value out of it, the hearts and likes always keep me going. So I appreciate those, I love your face. So how are you going to reach these goals, right? and accomplish your vision. Well, your inputs equal your outputs, meaning you can't do something if you don't first have the knowledge of like how to do that next step, right? So you need to fill yourself with a bunch of valuable inputs like a book, a course, a mentor, a coaching program, like super valuable inputs. So your outputs become more valuable, right? Like Bill Gates reads two hours a day. He still does. Like, why does he do that? Because he knows his inputs are going to create better outputs, right? So really nail down what are those things that you need to input to get better outputs? 
So don't overwhelm yourself. Um, for me, I if uh, back in Q2 of this year, I wanted to get better at sales. So what did I do? I bought a shit ton of sales books. I purchased a sales coach. I right? got a sales coach, Brad Newman, shout out. Um, and uh, I also bought a bunch of sales courses. And I binge watched those sales courses. And I bought those books. And I took the frameworks out of them. So frameworks, not hard work, right? Like if you if you can learn all the frameworks in the world, it will save you so much time because now you're viewing the world through a different lens. You're not viewing the world through chaos and like, I don't know how this works. Now you're learning the frameworks. Oh, you do this first, you do that second, you do that third, right? So cool, sales, very first, rapport building, framing it in their best interest to have this call, right? And then next step, open up the gap, ask these questions, right? How, like, how do you learn those? Books, courses, mentors, right? So learn all the frameworks that you can. My, uh, my two intentions for this year were, um, were personal growth and frameworks. Like personally, grow internally, learn as much as I fucking can, and fruits of labor fucking built a million dollar business out of it because I was just focused on like myself, right? And then also frameworks, learn as many frameworks as I can or could. And I did that. And now I view the world through a whole different lens because it's not chaotic as much anymore, right? I can view it through frameworks, step by steps, right? So um, your inputs equal your outputs and learn as many frameworks as possible. So where do we go from here? So we got off on a huge tangent. We we're talking about best investments. So number two is your first best investment that you're ever gonna make is into yourself, these things, right? Um, then your next best is gonna be into your business, right? So best next investment, always into your business. Yourself, your business, if you don't have a business yet, get a business, build a business. Um, so this can be ads. Everybody thinks about ads, but this can be OPW, other people's work. This can be consultants, contractors, so on and so forth. So invest in your business next. So if you're not happy with how much you're making per year um, and you're not happy uh, uh, with your income, um, hire a good mentor, hire a good mentor, hire a good coach, buy courses, read books. If you don't have any money right now, I hope you have enough money for a good book. Um, really nail down um, what it is you want to learn. So if you're focusing, focusing on sales right now, put up a post. Who, what's your favorite sales book? Figure out like what the best sales books are out there. Do some research on it. Um, if you're focusing on marketing, you can do the exact same thing and pull out those frameworks and just sit down, clear some space. And how I read books, I'm a slow reader. Um, so what I do is I get the book, first thing, I read the cover, the, and then I read the back, and then I go into um, the chapters, and I always read the first chapter because it's typically saying why this book is important. So I wanna put it in my head of, oh, I need to um, get as much out of this book because it's this important. And then I go into the different chapters that um, I can pull frameworks out of. Um, so I'll skip around um, and I will just go over the, the chapters that are the, uh, are, have the frameworks that I need, and then I'll take notes on those. Um, and instead of trying to read a whole book that might take me two months, um, I'll get it done in a day or two, right? And extract as much value out of that book because a 300 page book is probably 280 pages of information that you don't need, honestly. Um, so yeah. So those are your best first two investments yourself and then your business. 
Um, and then number three is all the other investments, right? So stock market, crypto, uh, real estate, you know, et cetera. So just now where, think about where your money is going right now. Um, and really, is it going towards alcohol, beer? Those are the same thing. Um, or like just a bunch of food that you don't need, a bunch of shit that you don't need, or is it going into yourself where you're bettering yourself and you're developing those skills that are going to last you a lifetime, right? Um, so those are um, the best investments that you can make. Um, and then when you have extra capital, capital to actually invest into these other investments and get closer to your FI number, right? Um, then... This is what I what I'm currently doing. So I have um, invested in the stock market, and I've got a. This is curveball for you. I've got a traditional IRA, independent retirement account. I don't have a Roth IRA, so it might be a little out of the ordinary. Um, but, uh, I've read up a bunch on it and there's a lot more inside of this website on if you're planning on retiring early, um, then a, a traditional IRA might be better for you. So I am not a financial, uh, expert, um, but I have read up on a lot of this shit and, um, really figure out like what is best for you in terms of investing into your uh, what retirement account your money goes into. So I've got a traditional IRA helping me with taxes, all of that stuff. Um, but, um, two, 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 I've got an HSA. Um, and you can read up more on that. Um, but that's, that's for tax purposes. Um, but stock market. So I use Vanguard. And I have 70% of my money invested there um, in US stocks. And then 20% in do to do um, in international stocks. And then I have 10% in um, bonds. So uh, let's see these stacks. Yeah. So this is the to do. Let me get out of here. Okay. Uh, so this is the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. So this just takes. Um, it tracks the S and P 500. Um, so 500 best companies, U S all put together. Um, it hedges your, your bets and it's not as volatile. And this is actually what, um, uh, Warren Buffett says, if you're not an active investor, you should put your money in the S and P 500, um, and forget about it. So this is money that I'm literally, I'm going to look at it, but I'm not going to like tie my emotions to it for the next, let's say 10, 20 years. I'm just gonna let it, put it in there, forget about it, let it go. There are gonna be dips, there are gonna be values, there's gonna be a recession, but I'm gonna ride it out, right? Um, because on average, this grows about 8%, um, 8%, uh, uh, 8% a year. And in terms of compound interest, I've got a good little handy dandy calculator. So let's say we have $50,000 and um i just put that all in at once um which you shouldn't you should be paying into your fund um monthly um and over over time after uh, different time points you shouldn't just all throw it in at one point um but let's say we have fifty thousand dollars in there um we uh, uh let it sit for 20 years at eight percent 
um, and let's say we don't even contribute anything additionally, like what is that $50,000 after 20 years at 8% gonna look like? So my $50,000 um, after 20 years um, now looks like without doing anything, um, I just made um, uh, almost $200,000, right? From just letting my initial investment over 20 years uh, make me 8% a year. Now, there is uh, 2% um, of inflation per year on average, right? Um, but still, this in 20 years without me having to do anything, that's pretty dope. And then if, let's say, I have that, and then I just invest another $1,000 per month, pretty cool. So now in 20 years, I have $800,000. Um, and that's just by contributing a thousand dollars per month, right? And let's up that up a little bit more. Say I put two thousand dollars away per month, and now I have over well over a million dollars in twenty years by having that initial contribution and then putting twenty uh, or two thousand dollars away for twenty years. So I'm twenty seven right now. If I did that. Um, I would have, um, by the age I'm 47, I would have that. And if we go back to our financial independence calculator, let's say that I am living on $35,000 a year. Let's push it up even more. Let's see 40,000. Cool. Then I have hit my FI number. Um, I can retire at age 47 if I do this, right? Um, and that's just by putting $2,000 away per month. Um, <clears throat> pretty freaking cool, and it just comes down to numbers. Um, okay, went off on another tangent. So, boo, boo, boo. So this is my, uh, it's called like the three portfolio, um, fund. So um, I'm 27 right now. So this is a little aggressive. As you get older, you want to be a little bit more conservative with your money and you don't like want to see the dips in the stock market and just seeing your money go down as you get older and freak the fuck out. Um, so you adjust these percentages um, as you get older, putting more into um, more into bonds and less into stocks. Um, so I've got that. And then I've recently started um, investing into uh, real estate cash flow investments. So um, buying a property, fixing it up, and renting it out. Um, and then <clears throat> the mortgage payments every single month are covered by the people that are renting it out. Um, so uh, that is, uh, I'm, uh, I'm working with Stacy Conkley on real estate investments and cash flow um, investments. But, um, but yeah, that's just a brief overview of the um, investments that I have personally. Um, and shit, we went through a lot. Uh, yeah, my biggest suggestion right now, if you want to nail down your FI number and learn more about how you can retire early, Go to this website, um, madfiantist.com. If you want these notes, hashtag TOB down below. So I'll share this with you guys right now. Everybody that comments. Boom. All right, all right, all right. So we've been together for 45 minutes now. And what's up, Josh? Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, want to ask me anything about business, um, about investing, about about budgeting, any of that stuff, hit me up. Do do do. Let me X out this. Move that. There I am. Let's see. I saw some questions come through. Do do do. Do 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 do. What's up, SJ? Good to see you. The baseball cards, synergy in product bundling. Yes. 
when I was selling baseball cards, that's when I was um, 12 years old and I paid my way to Cooperstown, New York, um, and got to go to the Hall of Fame because um, I really wanted to go and my parents didn't have that much money. So I just figured out how to make money and pay my way to, uh, to Cooperstown. SJ is saying, I facilitated only five years, three years, one year, uh, 90 days. Awesome. One page strategic, which in turn, the Rockefeller habits. Yep, Rockefeller habits, um, good to great. Um, yes. I would also add uh, Traction. Traction is a really good book for learning operations inside of your business. Um, Alvin. Hashtag T-O-B. Andrew, you crack me up. Thank you. I like being funny. Um, we got six people here. Show your face. Um, Jeremy, what's up? Ravi, what's up? Love from India. Love it. Oh, I have too much energy tonight, so that's why I'm on. Um, and I hope you guys got value out of that. But I'm just here. If you guys have any questions, keep this bad boy rolling because – I don't have anything better to do right now. I'll hit everybody up that hashtag TOB. <clears throat> if you guys got any value out of this, hit that heart button, hit that like button. Show me that you love me. Get out of that. Oh, but that's me. Just here. If you guys have any questions, keep this bad boy rolling. Cause... Oh, shut up in your stupid face. All right. I'll just drop this down below. Boom. Uh, so you got the document down there. You still got six troopers on here that are just watching me ramble. Show your face. Comment. Love me. Do, do, do. All right, all right, all right. Anyway, just have Ravi giving me love. I love that. We had Grant on here for a little bit. SJ said his favorite sales book, Sales Dogs. Haven't read it. it. Sounds awesome. I've always uh, marketed via my Facebook pages, not groups. How do you propose I swap over to a group? SJ, great question. Um, so make three to five posts on your page um, to move people to your Facebook group. Um, so just simply, hey, you can do what I call a comment for value posts. Hey, if you want to watch if you want to see this epic training on, um, I think you're in marketing. So if you want to see this epic training on Facebook ads, where I show you how I made a million dollars in my second year of doing running Facebook ads, comment down below Facebook ads. And then when they comment, tell them that the training is inside of the Facebook group and give them a link to the Facebook group. Um, so it's just an exchange of value, put posts on that page. Um, put value in your Facebook group and then direct people to your Facebook group and start growing that bad boy. So really all you're trying to do is figure out where your ideal clients hang out. So you've already got a small audience, but after that, um, figure out where your um, ideal clients are hanging out and then do an exchange of value with them. Like my best, the, the people that buy the most in this group usually come from interviews that I do in other groups or inside of paid groups. And I do those interviews. I give them a lot of value. I say, hey, come over to my Facebook group. And then they typically like, they end up buying. So figure out where they're at, move them to your Facebook group by giving them value and um, getting them into your group by an exchange of value. That's all life really is. Uh, business coaching and marketing strategically. So you knew all that. Just uh, drive people with value into your Facebook group. Put value in your Facebook group. Tell people about it in other groups on other other places and then send them over to your group. Uh, Ravi's saying, what's the craziest product service you or your students have sold via Facebook groups? Craziest product or service? Uh, I have a really awesome client that I'm onboarding on Monday uh, who is a sex coach. 
Um, so not like it's healing, it's therapeutic. Um, and it's really fucking beautiful how she does it. So that's gotta be probably the most different product or service that I've helped somebody sell. But, um, we, we help, um, uh, confidence. I don't know if I should call them confidence coaches, but coaches for gay men. Um, they're looking to life coaches for gay men. Um, that's out of the realm of business. And, uh, I've, we've helped, uh, an Italian coach, um, monetize like his ability to speak Italian and sell his services and teach other people Italian from the, the Facebook group. Um, yeah. So those are the ones that are out of like the business realm, you know, or for money. Uh, SJ, um, I have three main Facebook pages with 400 to 500 members each. Do I migrate all of them to one group? Um, all your material promoters. Yep. Yeah. Um, yes. So if you're focused on too many groups, it's a man who chases two rabbits, catches none. Um, so uh, you want to focus everybody like into one group. You get way more engagement. You'll get like you'll minimize the amount of time that you need to output content, which takes time. But if you can optimize the container in which you're delivering your content, that content converts so much better and becomes so much stronger. So create a new container for everybody to come into one. Um, uh, you just have a way to put it in a language constructs that makes a whole lot of sense. I've been doing this for a little bit, so that helps. Thanks, buddy. Um, I love these questions. Keep them coming, guys. Um, I'm an open book. Like, I haven't been doing too many lives inside of this this group. I've been so focused on our clients building internal operations, really building a machine that works without me, um, which has been really cool. Um, I went from working uh, like 60 hours a week um, last year, or not last year, two years ago, 2018, to working about 35 hours a week um, in my business. And we grew from half a million dollars to um, 1.1 million dollars. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, it's pretty cool that you can actually do less and make more money, um, and, and impact at the same time by like, I brought in the best coaches in the world inside of my programs. Um, and they're just delivering better value than I could, um, in terms of sales, messaging operations, like, just brought them and they coach and that's leverage as a CEO just gotta be good at leveraging OPW other people's work um, and uh, inspiring them um, and you learn how to be a CEO and you can start just removing yourself from the equation and kind of directing the machine instead of being in the machine um, yeah but I'm just rambling what's up Jonathan are you sticking around? You can ask some questions. I just got this thinking statue. I hope you guys think it's cool. Um, I just picked it up randomly. I thought it was dope. Um, I'm just talking out my ass right now, but eight of you guys are staying around, so keep it going. I don't know. I've never done a Facebook Live this late. Probably just got a bunch of Australians and people from India. Joe, thanks for the heart. You're my hero. Uh, SJ, I always love your amazing questions. And we got another one, my man. Um, what was your value exchange model of OPW in your programs? Um, I saw the thank you man statue. Thanks, man. Um, uh, I'm not super clear. Um, on that question, what's your value exchange model for OPW in, in your programs? Meaning like my coaches, um, we pay them um, and we coach them at the same time on how to grow their own businesses because they're not full time. Um, and, uh, and that way everybody gets a big win, win, win all around. 
So our coaches get training and um, they also get paid. Um, so, and like they're inspired by the mission. Like our purpose at Trap Buyers is human connection um, and connecting people first in online and Facebook groups. Um, and then it's in-person events. So um, we help people uh, grow their tribe of buyers in Facebook groups and help people connect. And then we help those people facilitate in-person events where they can facilitate connection in person and make a lot of money too at the same time. Um, and that's because like, I remember when I was first starting out as an entrepreneur um, and I moved back into my parents' basement, like stop drinking, stop hanging out with all my friends. I remember like, like friends, um, I remember just like one night being like, fuck, I'm lonely as hell. Like, where are my friends? Where's my connection? Um, and it wasn't until I started interacting in Facebook groups where I actually found that, where I found Jeff Miller, where I found Mackenzie Lieberman, Jordan Parker, and like then meeting up with those people at events, like we just deepen the intimacy and the relationship. Um, so that is what I want to give back to the world um, is helping people connect online first um, and, then, um, and then moving them to in-person events. And in-person events are some of the most profitable things in the world because I hosted an event with nine people in July and we did $165,000 at that nine person event. Um, we closed eight out of nine. Um, and then uh, at, uh, at my event in October, we had 200 people there and uh, we did a little over a million dollars um, at that event. Um, so, events can be hella profitable and people had massive life changes at Trump Live in 2019. Um, so it's, uh, it's just a great way to give back. And also like, it's a very profitable business model at the same time. Um, it's just, it lights me up. Um, yep. Yeah, you have to then create a new group of friends, hundred percent. John Williams, dude, I haven't seen you in a minute. I hope everything's going well, dude. Um, SJ, I meant when you um, brought in other coaches, yes, I'm paying them. So is it a blended cash or barter deal uh, inspired by the mission? I like that. Um, so there are different ways that you can set it up. Um, coaching rates uh, in this industry um, are 50 to a hundred dollars per hour. Um, I know, uh, Tony Robbins pays his coaches $50 an hour. Um, and, uh, so you can do it hourly. Um, you can do it, uh, monthly, a base rate, and then just say, Hey, this is the, uh, the rules and responsibilities. Like this is your hourly or like the amount of, uh, hours you commit to per month. Um, here's what I'll pay you per month. Um, that's what we do with a few of our coaches. Some of our coaches are hourly. Um, it, uh, it, it depends on the, the situation for sure. Um, SJ, loving the questions, loving that we have 11 people. <laughs> yeah, TOB fam. Um, you guys are just lurkers, not asking me any questions except for SJ. I still love you. Um, I'm trying to hit C more, but it's not allowing me, SJ. Um, one other character, SJ, I want to contribute to you is congruence. Uh, you walk the talk. Uh, you are an open book, as you said. Oh, that sounded really nice. I want to read more of that. Oh, here we go. And you support your own mission. Thanks so much, man. Um, yeah. I, I think this wouldn't be possible unless like I got closer to myself um, and removed the blocks in my life. Um, and it just allows me to kind of flow a lot more and feel more congruent and authentic in the way that I act because like I unblocked myself, so to speak. Um, David, oh, the question's right there. Awesome. Um, and actually we got a question from Robbie. So David, I'm going to answer yours in a second. 13 people. Let's keep racking them up. Invite your friends. Uh, if you're open to the possibility of inviting your friends, go ahead. Ooh, I've got two phrases that I want to share with you that if you're not using them, they will change how you communicate 
with people and open up new possibilities in your own life. So I'll share with those after share those with you after I answer these questions. Um, but Ravi uh, is saying um, if you had to start over uh, tomorrow with no market authority, what uh, would be your next uh, few steps? Um, so if I still have the same skill set, um, that makes it a hell of a lot easier. Um, the hardest thing for like entrepreneurs is developing a skill set or what they can actually like contribute. Um, but once you have that, it just comes down to um, like for me in this online space, um, productizing an offer, um, creating an offer that produces results. I would launch a beta program um, and I would create an audience. I would do what I know how to do, um, which is create an audience on my personal profile and in my Facebook group. Um, all I need from there is a traffic source. So my personal profile and my Facebook group are like my hubs, right? They're where I want to drive traffic to. Now I just need a source of traffic. So what I used starting out was other people's Facebook groups. So I would post in there, be super active and engaged in other Facebook groups where my target audience was at. And then they would come to my personal profile and then join my Facebook group because I had um, my profile funnel set up. Um, just saying, hey, and we have this Facebook group that will teach you X, Y, and Z. Click here if you want to join, right? So creating that hub um, and then you like just your offer, like audience and offer, um, like your marketing machine and your offer. Um, if you're under a quarter million dollars a year, um, you should be focusing 80% of your time on sales and marketing. That's it. Like create an offer that produces awesome fucking results and that you go ball to the wall to help people if it's like a coaching course offer and get awesome testimonials. Um, and then you just need to productize that offer um, and get people, find a traffic source, move them to your hub, like personal profile, Instagram profile, fucking YouTube channel, like those are all hubs. And then you create content that hits psychological triggers to move them to uh, uh, from a stranger to uh, a buyer. Um, now, I didn't know what the fuck those psychological triggers were when I first started out. I was just pumping out massive value um, and just trying to help as many people as possible. And um, it worked really well because people are built in with reciprocity. Like if you give a shit ton out for free, people are gonna come to you and say, hey, what else can I learn from you? Like, can I pay you, right? Um, so if you're first starting out, don't hold back. It's an abundance mindset that you come from when you just give away for free. Um, and it opens up so many other possibilities in your life. Um, because if you come from a scarcity mindset and hold back from like awesome content, um, then you're you're going to stay stuck like where the fuck you are because you're coming from a scarcity mindset. And whenever you come from a scarcity mindset, you're never going to expand and grow, right? Um, so that was, I, I hope that helps. But all you should really care about starting out is uh, marketing, sales, and having an awesome fucking offer, creating an awesome offer, and just helping people, right? Um, so hope that helped. Um, David, I love the long questions. So one quote that I love um, is, you're only limited by um, your ability to ask an effective question. And effective questions include context, right? So I don't want to limit you guys from asking questions. So ask whatever the fuck you want right now, but make sure that you're adding as much context to your question without going into your story. So another framework that I learned from Landmark, you have your story and you have what actually fucking happened. A lot of people, when they think they're describing context to their problem, they're actually describing the story, the shit that they got wrapped up into. But if you can share your uh, what actually is going on, what's actually happening, um, and give numbers and data like David is right now, like that leads into an effective question. Because now I have more context as the person who's answering to um, to deliver you a better answer to your question. Um, I see, like, and this used to be me, like just way too lazy, uh, like a two word question. And then I wasn't giving anybody fucking context to answer that question and get me a good answer. So you're only limited by your ability to ask an effective question. 
deliver more context that's based in what actually happened and not your story, and then ask the question, right? So David, Andrew, I have a highly engaged Facebook group with 2,300 uh, members in the weight loss niche. Um, it's been running for just under two years now, and I provide a crazy amount of value in free group. Um, have run a couple of paid programs and had very minimal success with it, probably about 12K in revenue in a year um, from running a few $97 accountability programs. Uh, any thoughts? Um, yeah, my first thought is um, don't sell, like your core offer should not be $97. Um, you need to figure out how can you deliver more value to be able to charge more money. And my guess is you're undercharging big time. Um, so I wouldn't recommend selling anything under $500 um, at very minimum. Like your offers should align with your financial goals, right? So um, if you wanna hit a financial goal of uh, 20K per month, like one of the easiest ways is become good at sales. Um, uh, put enough value in an offer that you can charge $5,000 and close four people, right? Each month. Um, so um, I think right there, it comes down to uh, you're just not charging enough for your offers. Um, uh, that's the biggest thing because this is actually a huge fucking value bomb. Um, what you wanna do ultimately um, to make a really scalable business um, is uh, create your offer that produces awesome results and then get out of the delivery as much as possible so you can focus on marketing and sales. Um, so that way your business becomes so much more scalable because now like you're out of that portion of your business and you can focus on revenue generating activities, right? So what we do, um, we have coaches in place that are much better than me at sales, marketing, um, uh, operations, and they handle those portions. And then we do a group call um, with me. And I have one-on-one -on -one client, kind of one-on-one -on -one clients, pseudo one-on-one -on -one clients, um, but that's for a much higher ticket uh, package. Um, but I try to get out one-on-one -on -one as, as soon as possible and as much as possible um, because your business becomes so much more scalable when you remove yourself from the delivery and operations as soon as possible. Um, and I've seen people exit way too early from the delivery and then their product went to shit. Um, so that can be a problem too. Um, but ultimately you wanna make sure that your clients are still supported, still getting amazing freaking results and putting in the place. So you can invest into people to take care of, take care of the delivery and so you can just focus on marketing and sales so hope that helped uh landmark changed my life who was that joe nice yeah landmark's awesome um highly recommend uh for anybody that's trying to figure shit out in their life um justin i'm trying to read all of this thank you for the contacts uh right now i have diet group over nice um over 18k my only offer is a low, whoa, no. Uh, and the strategy I've <laughs> been using is five day email honors monitor and um, broadcast emails for more ways to monetize group, uh, Facebook retargeting strategy, Facebook Live. Um, yeah, with your uh, audience, um, you should be making way more than that. Um, at least if, if you're getting good engagement or decent engagement, really. Um, I mean, you've got a list, man. Um, <clears throat> you, with that um, and people talking about their health in there, and if you're like a health conscious dude, know a lot about health, um, you could, should create programs that are making at least 30, 40, 50K um, coming out of that group. Um, which you might not think it's possible at first, but let me tell you, like I moved from a $97 product to a $797 product to a $5,000 product to a $30,000 um, program 
to a $60,000 program all with the same Facebook group. So it may not seem like possible right now, but um, you just edge yourself up, educate yourself more on the value that you can provide to others. Um, and you can charge more because you're delivering more value to them and getting better results for them. Um, so, uh, like really right now, it's not about monetizing your Facebook group. It's about solidifying your offer first, and then you can dive into the strategies, um, with messenger. Um, we have something called the messenger sales engine. Um, that's just straight up like scripts that we give our clients that you just say the script and it's straightforward. Um, and it's more about the other person talking and less about you talking um, inside of Messenger. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, the biggest thing right now is just offer, offer, offer. Um, and if you're open to the possibility, Justin, um, I highly recommend um, shoot me a message. Um, let's connect on this. Cause if you have that audience, like I've, I need more context on where you're at, but we could do a shit ton better. Um, if you're open to the possibility of working together, um, just shoot me a PM and we can explore that if you're open to it. Um, then do, do, do SJ. I love the questions. Keep them coming. Um, I am a lifelong learner, so I have had to learn to make my questions more concise. I, <laughs> I will break that role here for you. Awesome. Um, David says, I appreciate the response. Thanks for that. That uh, makes total sense. I have amazing testimonials from current customers. Perfect. Um, I'm definitely undercharging and it's a mindset issue, I reckon. Um, I have a, um, ooh, I kind of want to bring this up. Um, when people self-diagnose a mindset issue, what I... And it might be right, might be wrong in this instance. I regularly find that it's a goal setting issue. What I mean there is that you're not fucked up. There's nothing that needs to be fixed. You just need a goal and a vision that's more inspiring. Um, and you'll take more action. Like, I think this whole like mindset is everything, mindset is everything. Um, I'm not even going to say it's true to an extent. Um, it's a goal setting issue and being like, fuck, I got on a call the other day and I got that. It's a mindset issue. And I asked them like, well, what's your financial goal for this month? Well, I don't have one. But like, how are you supposed to like hit your financial goal if you don't have one, if you don't have any target, like. What's, what's your goal when it comes to your health over the next 90 days? Well, I don't have one. So like you're trying to become healthier. Like how are you going to know when you've hit it, when you've become like healthier, right? Like you have no North star. It's not a fucking mindset issue. It's a goal setting issue. Um, and I, I think mindset issues are like just limiting. Um, it's like, oh, well, uh, my mindset, my brain's fucked up. No, you're perfectly fine, whole, and healthy. You just like you just need to set goals, um, inspiring goals, and not too many goals. Like you need to know how to set goals and then learn how to plan it out to hit those goals. Like that's it. Um, and just mindset's really broad. But David, I'm so sorry. I had to go on tangent, um, and I don't know if that's the case. Could be mindset, um, but I just wanted to get my point across. Um, you said I have a sales background and can sell high ticket offers for other people with no issue, but find that trying to sell my home for the ad, that's typical. Um, <laughs> that's totally normal, David. Uh, my own products makes me operate from a place of fear. Um, I'm aware of it and I'm working on fixing that. Um, one quick fix um, is if it's a course, like if you're creating content for a course, um, if you create more content, for that program, you become more confident in it. So for example, I have a program called Authority Accelerator. There was a time where like I wasn't 
really confident in the um, uh, in the deliverables. So I sat down over a weekend and filmed 30 videos. Like I took four days to write out like all the content for the videos. And then over a weekend shot 30 videos in two days and our sales went through the roof um, because I was more confident in the offer so I could sell it a lot better, right? Um, so usually when it's with your own stuff, you're not confident in your own offer. Um, so do something to fix that issue. It's not learning about the next sales tactic or anything like that. It's about fixing your fucking product. Like that is the root issue. So might be, might not, but I'm speaking from experience here that like when I improve my programs, when I improve my products, which is a continual thing now, um, then, um, sales become, uh, shit ton easier right um we got another question robbie love it avery hey <laughs> oh shit i get nervous when avery gets on um uh what i really admire about you man is the honesty with which you deliver value love your answers no idea if we're ever gonna meet dude but i seriously wish i get the chance Dude, I fucking appreciate that. Um, thank you so much for those kind words. Uh, it's pretty cool. Like, shit, like two and a half years, fucking nobody. Like two and a half years ago, nobody wasn't confident in myself. Um, didn't know anything about like running a business, being a CEO, anything like that. Marketing, sales, decent at sales. Um, not amazing at marketing. Um, but uh, it's crazy how much you can change. Uh, when you just unblock yourself and catch momentum. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. It, there's a book called The Slight Edge, and Ravi Abubala always um, talks about it. I think it's his favorite book. Um, but uh, it's a super simple concept. Um, of uh, So picture the like axis right, right here. And you either have a slight edge up, that's exponential, right? Or a slight edge down. So the things on that are taking you down, right? Um, are uh, like, let's say, drinking too much, uh, eating too much, uh, coping activities, watching too much Netflix, um, going out too much, uh, unhealthy relationships, right? And when you're doing those things, you're on the slight edge down. Like that's just going to carry you down, down, down. You continue doing those things. You're going to keep going down, down, down. And it's just a compound effect, right? Just keep fucking going down. But there's also a slight edge up, which like you're eating healthy, like you're working out, um, you're feeling good, you're meditating, you are um, reading the right things, you're surrounding yourself with the right people. And over time, there's that compound effect that starts taking you up, 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 up. And it just takes time, but you start feeling it. You start riding this wave of momentum. And then what I have found, like two and a half years into this, is I've been pretty consistent with the slight edge up. Yeah, I've done my fair share of like YouTube binging and like random bullshit, but I've been consistent with pretty consistent with the slight edge up and doing those activities. And then you just start growing exponentially, 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 if you just stick to that path. Um, but it's crazy. There's there's another book called um, The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. Um, and he talks about, um, for I forget his phrasing exactly, but um, it's like staying at homeostasis. Like we want to, like our biology, don't know why but we just want to stay where we're at right like there are no threats let's just chill so when we start becoming more successful and start seeing like benefits we tend to self-sabotage subconsciously like without us even knowing it and then you're like shit how to get back here um and it's just because like we need to fight against that biology of like us just trying to bring ourselves down and stay at homeostasis because it's natural within us to like when we see a little bit of success, a little bit of change, we get fearful. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I, I see so many people like start, I was talking to my friend um, earlier smoking hookah and she's like just starting into this. 
um, entrepreneur game and she was picking my brain. It was such a good conversation. Um, but uh, she was creating all of these future problems. Like if I develop all these skills and become super successful, how can I relate to my friends? And like, that's a problem that she doesn't even have yet. Right. But she's making it up in her head to hold her back down. And we love to fucking come up with these problems um, that we're going to have in the future. Um, so I actually learned this in another program. Um, what's really good to do in terms of your bonuses for your offers is to solve a future problem that they see themselves having. So for example, if you are a fitness coach or a weight loss coach, right? Like their future problem is like, well, how do I adjust to the new, like just the new mindset and like, who am I going to be when like I have this weight shedded off of me? I'm kind of scared of that. Like, who am I going to be? And just creating some bonus, some portion of like a training on um, how to like, uh, uh, for lack of better words, like how to uh, really embody your new self-confidence, something like that. Um, for us, for example, um, we have a program. One of the bonuses is a wealth management um, workshop um, where we're bringing in experts on um, uh, on investing and what to saving money on taxes and all that because that's a future problem. Well, I have all this money now, like. What am I going to do with it? Right. Um, so that bonus solves that problem. Right. Um, so, yeah, just an interesting way to look at it. Now I'm just rambling and everybody asks questions and they're like, shut your stupid mouth, Andrew. But should been here a while. Yeah. If you guys have more questions, drop them down below. Again, I'm an open book. If you guys want to play all out and, uh, go hard in the paint, as they say, and uh, just play full out and ask questions down below. Be my guest. We went from like five people to 12 people to 18, back to 12. I must be rambling too much. Do, 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 do. If you guys are getting out of this, smash that heart button, smash that like button, give me some love. That would be awesome. Came on here just wanting to talk about financial independence, but we kind of talked about a lot more. All right. If that's it for everybody, I'm going to sign off. Avery gave me a task to do something before I go to bed. So I'm going to go do it. And I uh, hope you guys learned a lot, got a lot out of this. And much love. Keep crushing it.